Welcome to the Nightclub, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. So today I'm going to be going over the power valves on a Holly carburetor and the proper way to actually set these up. Now in my hand I've got a power valve. Um, when you turn on the engine, uh, you've got a little port at the base plate of the carburetor that's going to suck vacuum. This uh, this little basically is just a mechanical switch. When it uh, sees vacuum, it gets applied. Uh, ignore my hand. When it sees vacuum, um, it'll hold it shut, and after vacuum drops to a certain amount, it'll open back up, and then fuel will pass through these little orifices. Now, a lot of people don't actually know how these function, uh, and they definitely don't know how to set them up. So right here, I've actually got two metering blocks. On my left, I've got an adjustable metering block, and on the right, I've got a just a standard OEM metering block. So these, uh, these normally have a gasket, and then they get installed like this, and then you snug them down with the wrench, uh, be it an adjustable or a one inch or whatever you, you have available. Once installed, this part of the power valve is actually going to face the inside of this well. These holes right here are what suck in the vacuum that pull this back. At once it reaches uh, the low enough vacuum, usually under load, it'll open up. That's the basic function. Now the difference between the OEM style metering blocks and an aftermarket one is that the orifices are fixed on the OEM one. So this one I believe has like a 50. So this one's actually got a 55, size 55 uh, hole. And this one over here has something closer to like a 40. You guys can't really tell, but this rod won't go in the hole because the hole is smaller than this rod. This is a gauge pin set that I use to measure things out of my carburetor. So basically what determines how much fuel is applied during the activation of the power valve is um, basically dictated by these orifices. So this is non-adjustable on a har Holly carburetor uh, from factory depending on the style of carburetor that you have, which is a big reason why you want to size your carburetor accordingly if you're not planning to not mess with it at all. On the aftermarket ones, you have these these little pins, these little brass plugs that can be swapped in and out depending on how much or how little fuel. On the metering block on my truck, I've turned it down all the way to a 40. I believe it's a 40 on the on the um, power valve restrictor. Power valve channel restrictors is what they're called. Okay, so how does it work? How do you set these up and why do people always get it wrong? The Holly website tells you that you take your manifold vacuum at idle, you cut it in half, and then that's the power valve you run. So on my LS, uh, I run, have like about 22 inches of vacuum, which, which means I'm supposed to run a size 11 power valve. Now these power valves are rated by inches of vacuum. So this one right here is a 6.5. You can get a 5.5, 6.5, 7.5, 8.5. And what that means is that at a certain vacuum, uh, you'll at a certain reading, you're going to lose vacuum to a point where the power valve will open and start dumping. It's like a second set of jets, essentially. What people get wrong is that these don't just open at wide open throttle. Actually, through my testing, I found that they actually open as soon as you get on a grade as soon as you start getting on that grade, your power valve is going to open, if, even if it's just for a second. Sometimes you can maintain it depending on how fast you want to go up the hill, but you usually go into the power valve before you go into your secondaries, depending on the application. If you stab the throttle, obviously you're going to go into the power valve regardless because your vacuum is going to read zero, and then you're going to go into secondaries. It's a little harder to tune at wide open throttle. You want to split up these circuits into manageable sizes. After you've got your primary set up, You'll have your power valve. After you've got your power valve set up, then you set up your secondary jets and you should be good to go for wide open throttle. Uh, you wanna aim for that 12 and a half, 13 range for wide open throttle on, on an NA application. You don't wanna go too rich because you'll start washing out the cylinders. You don't wanna go too lean because you'll get detonation and maybe blow up one of the pistons. So through my testing on my LS, I found that my main jets run out of fuel right around nine to eight to seven inches of vacuum. What I mean by that is you have you have your main jets here in the front. This is facing the fuel bowl. So you got your main jets here in the front. That's what you're driving on most of the time, this and the transition. So you're driving on your main jets. 
After your throttle is open a certain amount, the amount of air coming through the throttle is going to be more than the amount of air that is being supplied by the main jets. But, but you also don't have enough throttle to be going into the secondary. So there's this in-between period between primaries and secondaries under load that you would see your power valve activate. Once you figure out where that spot is, Let's say you're accelerating and you're going up a hill and you notice that once you get into the 7.5, you're already hitting 14 and a half to one, 15 to one, go one size above that, 13 and a half, 14 to one, then the power valve is going to open and it's going to bring it back down to a manageable size, um, manageable AFR because now you're under load. You do want to be a little bit richer when you're under load. So the tools you're going to need for this is an AFR gauge, obviously, and a vacuum gauge. You cannot do this without either of them. You need to have both. I tried to do it without it, and I learned so much by actually hooking up my vacuum gauge and actually going through and driving it around and being, wait a minute. So it doesn't actually work like this. It works like this. Once you get to realizing where your power valve point is supposed to be set, not too low because then you're going to run lean in your primaries. Not too high because you're going to run rich in your primaries. Uh, you want to get it just right. Once you have that, uh, the setup point in the right place, then if you're noticing that you're dumping in too much fuel, bigger carburetors will have bigger orifices. Smaller carburetors will have smaller orifices right here in the power valve restrictor channel. Once you get a little bit more sophisticated and you want to tune your car 100%, then you get one of these. They're probably like 90 bucks or whatever. That's all I have for you guys. I hope all the instructional stuff that I'm putting up on the screen is helpful. So I know it's a little bit complicated, but I hope this seems to help somebody out in the future. Understand that rule of thumbs are a good starting point, but each engine is different and everybody needs to have their carburetor calibrated exactly to what their engine is asking for. Uh, all of this depends on the weight of the vehicle, the gear ratio, what engine, what transmission. And no two drivers are the same, so that'll also play a small role. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, out.